one look at her first round masterpiece against Vladimir Epishin, one of Karpov's seconds, will surely win you over. Polgar had white, and she opened with her customary pawn to e4. She doesn't back down, she just loves to go on the attack. Epishin, a bit of a solid cookie, played the Karakhan. But that is meat and drink to our Judy. Pawn to d4, d5. Knight c3, protecting the pawn. Pawn takes pawn on e4. Knight takes pawn. Now, knight d7 is a speciality of Karpov's. He's had tremendous success with it, and no doubt Epishin has done a lot of work with him on this variation. So, what could Polgar do against it? Well, it turned out pretty well for her. She played bishop c4, pretty standard move. Knight to f6. Now, instead of exchanging, Polgar plays the sharpest move, knight to g5, threatening f7, of course. So, pawn comes to e6. Now, queen e2. Well, there's some wicked tactics going on here. The knight can't be kicked immediately, because if h6, for instance, knight takes pawn on f7, an old trick. And if king takes knight, queen takes pawn. Nasty stuff. And that's going to be the end of the game. King g6 and bishop d3 check, and it's just marching up the board, and mate follows shortly. But as all these Karakhan players know, they've got to play knight b6 first, and that way e6 gets protected. So the bishop goes back, got to keep the bishop on, good attacking piece, and then h6, that's the difference. So the knight must go back to f3, but no problem, it's going to land on that e5 square sooner or later. Black played pawn to c5, breaking down white centre. That's classic strategy here, very important indeed. Bishop to f4. It's on a nice diagonal, and naturally that prepares queenside castling. Bishop to d6. Pushing, trying to exchange pieces. Good idea to try and reduce white's attacking chances. Bishop g3, that's a clever move. Because when those bishops are exchanged, then the h file will become open, as we'll see in the game. Well, Epishin is worried about, after white castles on the queen side, a rook bearing down on the queen. So he played queen c7. Polgar captured on c5. Epishin recaptured. And queen side castles. This looks like a fun position for white to me. I mean, she's got a king safely on the queen side. Pieces look very active. And um, black hasn't castled yet. And this bishop is a bit of a problem. The bishop on c8. It's blocked in for the moment. And uh, of course, you know, if the bishop doesn't move, then the rook on a8 doesn't move. OK, but first things first, that bishop on d6 is attacked. So Epishin exchanged on g3, and this is the reason why Polgar moved it back to g3. She recaptures with the h-pawn. So the h-file is open, and you never know, something nasty might happen. So the rook has a few possibilities on the open h-file. Bishop d7, yeah. Epishin has to try and solve the problem of this bishop. Polgar played the rook up to h4. I do like that move. It's the old swinging rook moment again. Now, I think Polgar, she's not quite sure where that rook is heading for the moment. It might double up on the d file. Could be useful. Dunno. Might come to f4. Who knows? But the other thing it does is it prevents a black bishop, for instance, going to a4, exchanging off the bishop on b3, which is doing a good job of protecting the white king. There's a bit of influence over there with the rook on h4. So I think that's an excellent move, multi-purpose move, rook h4. Rook c8, OK, bit of pressure on the c-file, but no worries, because that bishop is holding the fort, among other pieces. Knight to e5, yep. That is a lovely piece. Do like the knight on e5, and also making way for the next knight to come into the game. Hitting the bishop, 
which moved, bishop b5, and now queen e1. And it's at this moment that perhaps Epishin misjudges the situation. He castled here, but as we shall see, that just walked into a ready-made attack. It takes nerves to hold the king in the centre for a long time, but Epishin should have done that. He should have kept his king in the centre for, for a moment longer somehow, perhaps played a knight into d5. The problem is he always has to watch out for these knight takes f7 tricks, as we saw right at the start of the game, because e6 would still be caving in. Anyway, he castled. And perhaps it was a little bit difficult to predict that White's attack was going to be so violent. Polgar brought out the next knight to f3, supporting e5. Good move. Knight d5. King b1. Well, it doesn't look too terrifying for the moment. But the first threat is pawn to c4. One of your piece. So Pishin had to move the bishop back. And now queen d2. The pressure begins to mount. The threat Rook takes h6, blasting through on the h-file. And after pawn takes rook, queen takes pawn, followed by rook h1, and hey-ho, it's mate on h8. Epishin found a defence with rook to e8. So that if rook takes pawn, pawn takes rook, queen takes pawn, he can just bring his queen back to f8. And that solves that one. So Polgar just lined up the rooks instead, rook h1. Threat again, rook takes pawn, and Apishin had to grovel back with his queen, queen to f8. Polgar cranked up the pressure. This is looking pretty nasty now. Pawn to g4. This is a pretty mechanical attack. Threat, pawn to g5. Smashing open the h-file. So Apishin is going to have to find some uh, fairly desperate moves now. Knight to e4. He's in big trouble. Attacking the queen. The queen simply went back to e1. Knight d6. Okay, this is his idea. Polgar played g5, and now he played the knight into f5. And he's hoping to be able to plug a few gaps in uh, his defence here, but nope. Polgar just hammers straight through. Pawn takes h6. Just giving up a rook. No problem at all. Knight takes rook. And now the key move. Pawn to h7. Check. Well, first of all, if king takes pawn, rook takes knight check. King g8. Queen h1, and that's the end. Rook h8 can't be prevented. King h8 is therefore forced. Now not rook takes, but knight takes h4. I suppose Epishin was hoping that the h-file would be blocked and his king would be safer, because the pawn on h7 actually covers the king. But as we can see here, Disaster is not far off. Threat, knight g6 check. Pawn takes knight, knight g6 checkmate. It's not easy to cover the g6 square. For instance, knight e7 would be met by bishop takes pawn on e6. Of course, if pawn takes bishop, then again, knight g6 is the end. Epishin tried knight to f4 to cover the g6 square, but this was the moment where Polgar turned a fairly standard attack into a sparkling gem. Voilà. Mat, je mat. Non, pas, pas mat, parce que... Enfin, c'est mat en quelque... Ah, oh, oh, oh là là, ah, superbe Oh, elle donne la dame, c'est fabuleux Sur dame prend dame oh, Magnifique. She found queen to b4. Beautiful move. And if queen takes queen, 
then comes, well, not knight takes pawn check, because then king takes pawn, and black seems to be just about groveling out. But instead, she flicks in knight h to g6 check first. And now, if either knight or pawn takes, then knight takes pawn is mate. Beautiful stuff. With the knight on f4 attacked by the queen on b4, it's pretty amazing that a pishin has a move just to keep him in the game at all. But, there we go, he found pawn to g5, which creates an escape square for the black king and protects the knight. But Polgar had foreseen that one. She found queen to d4, a killing move. So there's a nasty discovered attack, knight g6 or knight f7 check. And if f6, blocking the diagonal, then knight g6 check wins black's queen. Epician tried king to g7, but that was met by another bit of razzle-dazzle. Knight f5 check. Pawn takes knight. And now there are probably lots of wins, but Polgar found an elegant solution. Pawn to h8, queen, check. Queen takes queen. And now knight takes pawn, discovered check. When the king moves, for instance, king g6, then knight takes queen, and it's all over. According to you, what was the decisive mistake of your opponent on the first game? Well, uh, it just went everything so smoothly for me. Well, probably somewhere in the opening where he castled, he had to be more careful, mm -hmm. I guess. Bon, tout s'est passé si agréablement pour moi dans cette partie, si facilement. Je pense que quand il a roqué à ce moment-là, ça, ça a été un peu l'accélération le, le, du processus. Non, je veux dire, c'est très rare qu'il joue un jeu comme ça à ce niveau.